Hi, this is These Unprecedented Times, and I'm Claire Hogan with the Studio for Teaching and Learning Innovation at William & Mary. With social distancing, COVID has forced the student body to reassess what it means to be social. One organization that has been reckoning with the effects of quarantine is Alma Mater Productions, or AMP. Often recognized as the largest student organization on campus, AMP is the group behind all your favorite on-campus events, the spring concert, the homecoming comedian, screen on the green, and more. These events are incredibly popular among students and can draw crowds of hundreds. Right now, that's an issue. Jehan Naryalvala is the Director of External Affairs for AMP. He's responsible for AMP's publicity and presentation. Today, we talked to Jehan about AMP's strategy for promoting community activity on campus when in-person events have been halted. I'm the Director of External Affairs for AMP, so basically what I do is I sort of like run the marketing, um, like switch up our branding, sort of like make sure that the word gets out about our events um, and sort of like manage the marketing of the seven other committees uh, within AMP. But yeah, that's basically what I've been doing this semester. Um, Other than that, though, like I feel like I was a lot more uh, involved last year. So if I'd been doing as much as I was doing last year um, with the pandemic, I feel like it would have been a lot uh, more stressful. But because I only have, you know, this one task with AMP, I'm able to put in like 100% into that. And for folks who don't know, like, what AMP is, can you just, like, describe it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, So AMP uh, stands for Alma Mater Productions. We're the, like, main events programming board on campus. It's a student-run, student-volunteer group. Um, basically, like, we're given an allocated budget from student unions and engagement and student assembly uh, every year, and we just put on a bunch of events. Um, there are seven committees within AMP, so there is a let me see if I get them all. Okay, so there's films, <laughs> there's interns, there's homebrew, live, special events, science and sustainability, and impact. Oh, nice. So I got them. I think I got them all. No repeats. <laughs> so, yeah, those are our committees in AMP. Um, and all of them put on very different events, which is really great because as I'm looking over, like, the branding and marketing of stuff, like, I'm looking at very different things for each of them. So all of them are trying to get to their audiences in different ways. Um, which is really nice to see. And I think this year we've definitely, even though we're virtual, we've really diversified the type of events we're doing even more so than we have in the past. Um, So that's been a really cool development that AMP's going through. And then um, just a little plug, but we are starting recruitment next semester. So if you're interested in joining AMP or learning more about it, please, you know, feel free to reach out. Yeah, so normally, like, in a semester, AMP does a ton of in-person events, right? So it's all kind of going virtual yeah, for this sure. semester. How yeah. is that How is that working for you guys? Yeah, that's, it's, it's a tough one, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, so last spring, we really had um, this whole plan. That's when it starts, right? We do the budgeting process in the spring, really. And uh, at that point, we come up with the events we're going to put on. So every committee goes back to their committee. Or, sorry, every chair goes back to their committee. And they're like, look, we have this budget. Um, what are we going to put on? Um, and they come back. And uh, in the spring, we came back with a lot of in-person events and only like one or two virtual events per committee. Um, and once summer hit and we got the announcement that fall would be, was it like June or something? I mean, right. we weren't in panic mode because we still had backup events in case the semester went virtual. Um, but we did have a lot of like really cool different in-person uh, events that sucks couldn't really pan out. Um, but I think that the fact that like we had planned for that virtual programming anyways really helped us out because it wasn't like in panic mode by the time fall started. Um, by the time fall started, like we already knew what those events would look like um, as well as like a fully fledged schedule of like sort of what we're doing. Um, so yeah, it has been difficult in the sense that like we haven't been able to like fully sort of put on the events that we would have liked to put on and we're having to resort to more virtual events than we do have in-person events. Um, that being said, though, we have had a few in-person events, um, just a few that come to mind, like we've had pumpkin carving. Um, we had a screening of the Invisible Man at Matoka called Invisible Man Toka, if y'all check that out. <laughs> um, what else we had? One, oh, yeah, we had uh, Sunken Sports. Um, so, you know, we have, like, had a few uh, in-person events where we feel like we could have them um, and chairs feel comfortable that, like, social distancing um, and, like, masks can be enforced in these locations, but... If the chairs aren't feeling comfortable in an event that we've done in the past, so, for example, the film's chair um, was like, you know, like, I don't know if we can do Screen on the Green this year. I don't feel comfortable with that many people having to enforce it and going around and telling people, hey, like, don't, you need to sit further apart, you need to sit further apart. He's like, I didn't feel comfortable with doing that. Um, so he just didn't have Screen on the Green, and he replaced it with another sort of virtual event. 
Um, and that's just been, that's just how it's been going really just up to, um, the chairs and the committees to decide like what they feel is safe and, uh, responsible given the circumstances. So can you give me a couple examples, like what types of virtual events are you doing? I know I've seen like a virtual homebrew, which is where people sort of bring their own like music. Like how is that working? Yeah. Um, so we've had a few virtual events at this, actually more than a few, we've had a lot. Um, just a few that come to mind, we had now DeMarco, um, and he was on a zoom call with our lovely Deja Robinson from the impact committee. And she was just like running this interview with him. He was actually telling a story first about like what, like how he grew up and, um, sort of how he like thought about his own disabilities. Um, and then it turned into a Q and a, so students could submit their own questions and Niall would respond. And he had, um, an interpreter with him that would, you know, sort of like tell the students back, like what he was saying. Um, so that was really smooth and a really like, it was a really nice event. And I think we had about, I think we had over 200 students come, which is kind of wild considering that, you know, it is a zoom webinar and students are anyways on zoom, like every day of the week. So to get people to get on zoom regardless is like an accomplishment in itself. Um, some of the things we had were this like escape room kind of situation. So sometimes I think more so than we have in the past, we've had to rely on vendors for virtual events just to sort of spice it up a little bit. So we did have this like escape room vendor that we uh, consulted and they sort of like put every, uh, put, like I think like seven or eight people per group in different teams. And they kind of like ran this escape room that they've run at other colleges at this point too. Um, so that was really nice. Um, I keep saying, so that was really nice. They're all really nice. I promise. <laughs> and then ver- homebrews have been interesting in the fact that like, it sort of is the same event every time, but the mix between virtual and in person has been really nice. So sometimes when, you know, Terrace is not available or, you know, we need a different location. So I think the last in person one was actually in the Sadler atrium because hmm. it was later at night and we're like, we don't know if we can really, we can't perform on Terrace at that hour, yeah. you know? So we had to switch it up, switch to Atrium. Then the one from this past Thursday was completely virtual. So we did a Facebook Live sort of situation. Um, promotions stay basically the same. So we're still promoting it the same way. It's just that the locations change from, you know, in person to online. And we're trying to get it so that next semester we can have still a few in-person events like we've had this semester. But still kind of keeping in mind that, like, we will probably have, you know, like, sort of like a 50-50 split between in-person and virtual events. Yeah. Um, sorry, did you need any other, like, sort no, of, like, no, events or anything? Okay. Sense. Yeah, because I see, I see so many of them on Facebook, and I yeah. just think it, it's so interesting that you're having this mix of, like, mm-hmm. in-person and virtual events. You're kind of doing both, kind of, like, interacting with students in, like, multiple different ways. Yeah, I mean, and you look around on campus right now, and one of the things you notice is, like, wow, it's, like, very empty. And there's a lot of students, right. you look around, you're like, there are a lot of students who are still at home this semester yeah. who are just taking classes online Mm -hmm. and so it's not fair to them to be taking these classes from home and sort of like only putting on events for the students who are on campus so we want to make sure that they really that they have an opportunity to sort of like enjoy what we have to offer as well so when they come back to like you know what like amp gave me this like experience even when i was at home when i was away from campus you know what like i'd like to go to their events in person too when they when they start back up so we really want to make sure that we're putting on events for the entire campus community not just sort of the people who are on campus so amp for you is kind of like this bridge between like the virtual and the in-person students um that's an interesting way to put it um i, w- I wouldn't be opposed to that honestly it sounds <laughs> like a good way to put it um i more so see amp as like what students will turn to when they need like something other than classes right now. Um, I think there is a sort of like lack, like other clubs and organizations are having a, like a tough time coming up with events and, you know, that are not on zoom and they're having trouble with getting numbers and getting people to actually like show up. Um, some clubs that have actually been good with this uh, include like FASA. Um, they've been doing a pretty great job of getting people to like show up to their events. Um, but other groups, I just know like they are struggling and they're like coming to us and asking us like, Hey guys, what can we be doing better? So for us right now, it's just like making sure that the students have an outlet um, and that they have something other than classes to look forward to. So by putting on these events, we're giving them that like extra campus experience that not that's just not classes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and by putting on like a wide variety of events, we're trying to give them, you know, we're not trying to give them the same event over and over and over again. Um, even like, so if you look at something like the Films Committee, right? In the past, it was just like, hey, we have two or three blockbuster screenings we have a screen on the green, we might have a trivia night. Um, this year they've sort of like switched it up. So 
They had like a movie poster contest that they're like raffling out prizes for. They had the sun king. They had the Invisible Man screening at Matoka, which is pretty different. Um, and you know, I'm not, of course, not coming to mind right now, but they definitely switched it up from what we normally do to accommodate for students who are not here right now. Um, and they also had this little like Halloween kind of like bracket thing they did on Instagram. So they were like running that on their own. Um, so as well as like providing for students on campus, I really think that it's kind of difficult that without in-person events, it's hard for people within AMP to even bond with themselves. So things like that Halloween movie bracket are really nice in that sense that like, you know, the people in the committee can have fun doing these things. And like when they're having trivia nights, they can like come up with prizes together. So as important as it is for like students to also have view AMP as an outlet, like we love seeing like people within AMP using it as an outlet as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you sort of mentioned like a lot of student organizations are really struggling right now, like engaging with people. And yeah. you mentioned you, AMP sort of is a resource for them. Are you like helping other orgs? Are you collaborating? How is that working? Well, I would not, I would not say a resource as much. It's just like, you know, just in passing conversation, like, you know, like AMP is doing a pretty good job, like getting people to actually attend the events, you know, like what's working out for yeah. you. And I really like don't know. I think it's just the work that the committee chairs are putting. I, don't, I do know it's the work that the committee chairs are really putting in to make these events happen and their committees as well. Because they are really invested in these events, and they like, if you look around campus, you know, you used to fight for that for that Sadler poster spot. Right, right. And now there's like at least like two or three that are open at all times, kind yeah. of thing. You know, and that's that's wild. That's like, I don't know if that's ever happened before. You know, like when I was in Sasa, it was like a struggle to get a spot on that wall. Uh, you like everyone wanted the poster wall, and like that just means like you know, there's like f way fewer events. So now, like, the pressure is kind of on us to, like, provide for the campus community and sort of, like, go above and beyond what we normally do. And I think that they definitely have done that. And I personally am just, like, super proud of them for, for doing that. Yeah, so how did you first get involved in AMP? Like, the first time you sort of came on campus, why did you think, like, oh, I should I should join AMP? Ooh, so it wasn't even first got on campus. When I first got on campus, actually, my first thought was, I'm going to join Griffin Bangra. Um, I really just like loved the idea of just immersing myself in my own culture. So I grew up in the Williamsburg area, like I said, you know, just about 30 minutes away. Um, it's, it's not the most diverse area and sort of like coming here and finding a South Asian community and, um, getting really close to them and, you know, finding out more about myself was just like my first goal, I think. Mm -hmm. And so like Bangra was like really my outlet for that. Um, but other than that freshman year, like I was very much focused in on like government research and stuff. Um, I know it's a long-winded answer. I'm no, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. But, like, I just really was involved with everything in the government department, from classes to research um, to, like, I did, like, I think I was doing two research jobs at the same time at one point, mm. too, for the government, for not the government department, but in, in these, like, government-related areas. Um, and I really wanted to pursue something in film mm. um, because, like, I knew that that would be my second major. And so I was like, you know, I really don't know where to even start. Mm. Um, and I was like, you know what? Let me just join this AMP Films thing. I don't know what it's about. It has the word films in there. <laughs> Let's just see what it's about. I know yeah. they put the events on. I've been to a few of the screenings. Right. I've enjoyed myself there. They're very welcoming. Um, let's see what it's about. So I decided to, I think, apply um, the spring of my freshman year, actually. I was just like, let's try it out. And that sophomore year was so much fun. And I feel like I learned so much from the group from, like, you know, just, like, team building exercises to, like, learning more about graphic design. Um, it was just really helpful stuff that I learned from from the AMP experience. And, like, not one second goes where I, like, regret any of it. It's just a, it was a really good experience. Yeah. So are you still interested in films? And, like, how does are you majoring in government? How do those two things sort of mesh? Oh, yeah, I'm majoring in both. Okay. Um, they don't really mesh. I like to keep <laughs> my food separate. Um, That's fair. That's fair. A lot of people ask me, like, so do you want to, like, make a documentary film? And I'm like, <laughs> no, not not really. Like, mm -hmm. I just like them both on their own terms. Um, I'm very much interested in kind of, like, new media development stuff. So i um, hoping that, like, you know, if, when, law school, fingers crossed kind of thing. Um, that's kind of, like, what I want to pursue is more so just, like, entertainment and media law. Um, sort of this, like, emerging field that, like, no one's paying attention to. So mm -hmm. I feel like... That's where my interests lie. And I think, like, being a part of AMP Films um, was, like, foundational in that. Not to go back to that, sorry. But because, you know, during committee meetings, of course, we're talking about events and stuff. But 
once we had these events figured out, it was just like us having fun and just being a, like a group of friends kind of thing. And we just talk about these things and this sort of like developed my interest in learning more about, you know, film media. It sort of like piqued my interest into joining even like the DC Summer Institute because my chair at the time was in that, uh, the New Media Institute. And he was like, I highly recommend you checking it out. So he helped me with my application. Then my like, res- helped me up with my resume, um, you know, like even like helping, helping me out beyond that and just being like all right so these are the internships i'm applying to like who can i reach out to those things so it's been really good um for that kind of stuff too and you know it's a very like it's a small group of people within amp like it could be it it really looks like a massive organization but it is a like a smaller group on campus and like because uh everyone just knows each other and everyone wants to help each other um i just feel like the opportunities to do more beyond amp are just kind of endless I hope that made sense. Yeah, no, huge run on sentence. Definitely. <laughs> so AMP kind of like ties into like your, your film interests in that way. Uh, I guess so. Um, okay. AMP more so like put a different interest in me, which was hmm. like, I really wanted to learn how to master Adobe for hmm. some reason. Okay. I was like, I really just want to learn how to do this. And I always had an interest in like, um, I had this thing called like Mo- Movavi Sweet Editor, this little thing I bought for like 20 bucks, but it's not a great video. It's a fine video editor. It's not great, but I really just wanted to like learn how to edit more and like videos and graphics and stuff. And I just had fun, you know, doing that kind of stuff in high school. So I was like, let me learn how to do it on a professional level. And so AMP was really my channel to like express my creativity. So when we're creating, you know, graphics and posters and Facebook flyers and videos for events I was always the one to just be like I want to do that I want to do that you know um and it was just a way for me to like learn more about these programs and build on that so I don't know if it like peaked into uh or sort of like carried over into my interest in film as much as it did sort of like carry over into my interest with like graphic design and now I got myself a little teespring store where I just have like designs up on there um you know just little little shirts and stuff that I make just for fun so yeah. So how, how did that happen? When did you decide like, oh, I could make money doing this? Oh, um, it's not even money. Like that. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm selling these things for like really cheap. So you can like adjust your own prices. So it's like mm-hmm. five bucks per article of clothing that I'd be making, which is really like not that much because like the base cost of them is like pretty expensive. But I really just like wanted to get my stuff out there. I was just like, you know, what? like it's out. It's like about time that I started like slapping that mm-hmm. stuff on something. I, I was going to say something else than stuff, but <laughs> I, I, I stopped myself real quick. I feel like since you've been the external director, is that the correct title? Yeah. Um, you have, I've noticed some changes on the AMP Instagram. Have you had anything to do with that? It seems like you guys have been doing some more like videos and things. Yeah. We, um, we're trying to get the word out about our events, like however we can. So one thing we've been trying to do that we've done in the, oh, sorry. So one thing we used to do in the past is, sort of like post the same graphic everywhere. Mm. Um, and that's not really helpful. That doesn't give you a sort of like insight into what the event's about. So now we've been trying to make it so that like what we're creating is like suitable for the platform we're creating it for. So just posting a Facebook event flyer on Instagram, it just doesn't like it doesn't cut it, you know, like that makes sense for a Facebook flyer. But if I have like, a variety act coming say i have a jabuki coming i'm not going to just post the flyer of course that would attract a lot of attention not gonna lie but i'm going to try to post you know a video of him show like what he's about put a little more pizzazz into it um we saw the difference between we had two virtual comedy nights um the first one we didn't put any sort of video out there's nothing about that uh, those two comedians that were coming um but it was like a good audience but the second time we did it, you know, we made it a little more of a high production video. So we had a video of Maya May. Uh, we created a little stinger at the end of it saying, mm. you know, like, come out this weekend. And so, like, we made it seem like a more high production event, even though it was the same quality, the same effort went in. It was just that one thing that changed. And we did end up getting more people showing up to that event, which is really awesome and really great. Um so, yeah, we have been, like, trying to, like, div- like change up our Instagram. It has been a little dry if you look in the past. Um, and hopefully, like, the thing was, like, when in-person events um, start up again or, like, once we, you know, have a few more of those next semester, we're hoping to even, like, add some pictures of people at our events, you know, just trying to show, like, what goes on at our events to people that, not, that might not be uh, familiar with what we do. Well, thank you. 
Also, can you um, particularly answer for why T Pain isn't here? Oh my can you god! Speak for that? Can I speak <laughs> for that? Um, no, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just he's really expensive. Well, okay. <laughs> he's just really expensive, and I don't know if he would like to do a virtual concert. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I have been trying to lobby for DJ Shack, um, ooh, ooh. and everyone on Amp Exec has shunned me. <laughs> Um, they're actually very much opposed to it, and I think next time I bring it up, they're gonna kick me off exec. Um, well, but DJ Shack, let, let, let him, let's let's hear it out. How do y'all feel about DJ Shack? I do not know this person. Yeah, I, I have no opinion. Yeah, it's Shaquille O'Neal, oh, but he's well, DJ. I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> See, that's he, what I'm. Does he <laughs> DJ? He does. <gasps> oh wait, this is so important. I'm so glad that we have an ally. In is you. his table like <laughs> really tall? Because he's like a tall guy. He's like a I actually set. don't. I don't know what his video setup would look <laughs> like. Honestly, I'm hoping he's doing like a little, maybe a little hunch over, so oh, we can at least see that. the face. Um, but yeah, it's probably better for Zoom too. You know? I feel like, yeah. I, like, face would you see DJ Shack or would you see T Pain? I know who I'm going to see. That's true. I yeah. have to agree uh, with you. I go for DJ Shack. I don't know. See, I, don't, I, I, I actually loved. I love T Pain. No, no, no hate on T Pain. <laughs> but I repeat, but DJ Shack. Mm. It's just. It's I just different. Like since T-Pain isn't here, I feel like we can. this can be an anti-T-Pain space, <laughs> and it's okay. Hey, I, have, I have always kind of wondered about this, like sort of behind the scenes of AMP. Like, how do you decide who you invite to, oh. you know, do comedy, to do the concerts? Like, how does that work? That's interesting. That's a great question. That's nothing to do with me, actually. Um, <laughs> but I will speak on it nonetheless. All right. Um, so... Our committee that decides, so we have, as I listed out, you know, like the seven committees that we have, um, each of them kind of do their own thing. Um, and then like we meet once a week and sort of discuss what's happening. Um, but the one committee that deals with these sort of like acts you're thinking about, so whether that be the artists that come or the comedians, that's the live committee. Um, and so at the beginning of the year, they sort of have these like lists of, so they know they have to hit, I think, two comedians a semester. Um, and then I think two artists, right? So mm. for the Welcome Back concert, there's an opener, there's a main act. For the spring concert, there's an opener, there's a main act. So they had to decide that well well ahead in advance. Um, and I think, ooh, I think T-Pain might have been, like, for last year, might have been finalized around, like, January. But we keep it hush-hush, you know? Right. That's just how it goes. Um, so that's the live committee that really decides that. Um, and everyone who's joining AMP is always, like, What's the committee where I get to choose? Who gets to <laughs> sing here? Um, it's it's always one of the questions we get. So now I'm going to set it up straight on this podcast. So <laughs> you would like to do that. Live is your spot. Live is your place. Um, but they all, live also does other things. But yeah, live is who decides that. They have like a list and they all vote together. So these committees, again, are made up of freshmen, sophomore, junior, senior. Oh, sorry, not freshmen. Sorry, sophomore, junior, seniors. Um, and you know, it's a pretty diverse group, different music tastes, different comedy tastes. And so, you know, we end, whenever we end up with is usually a good, uh, mix of like what the campus, uh, wants. I cannot speak for Mr. Wives. I really cannot. Um, <laughs> that was not me, but I don't know. I kind of like Miss. I went to what that one and I, they were good performers. See, there say. we go. There's something for everyone. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, Mr. Wives, not for me. Yeah. Well, Mr. I, Wives I, you know, for Claire. Uh, See? Thank you. Exactly. I don't have like great music taste, so I won't, you know, I won't speak to that, but I, I enjoyed them, you know. So I know like the concerts are definitely like super popular, but this semester, it obviously the events look kind of different. What are like the most popular ones that you've seen? Like what are students drawn to this semester? Um, I think students are looking for those, for those outdoor events. They really are looking for those in-person events this semester. Um, granted, um, now DeMarco and the election debate, both done by the impact committee went spectacularly. I mean, like actually like phenomenal in terms of numbers. Um, but I think students are really looking for those outdoor activities. So would that be the Invisible Man screening we had where, you know, it's minimal moving around and stuff, but it's still in person, you're sitting, you're watching a movie? Or whether that be an event like Sunken Sports where you're moving around in the Sunken Gardens, they have like a bunch of sports set up for you to play and you get a free shirt kind of thing. Um, so from what I gathered, I think people do want like more in-person stuff. It's just for us a matter of like how we can do it and do it safely. Yeah. So AMP is kind of like providing, I mean, because a lot of students only have virtual classes, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like kind of their one opportunity to like actually have something like yeah, in person. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those Zoom calls, you know how it goes. It's mm. it's a little bit, after a while, it's, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
So we try to diversify. And, and our events that are virtual, too, are, I mean, I'm not comparing those to Zoom lectures at all. It's just there's that Zoom fatigue that sets in after all, just, like, yeah. staring at your laptop. But even the Zoom events we have are, like, pretty engaging. And, you know, they're really fun events. Um, what was it? Uh, the Interns Committee, which is, like, established at the end of, I think, like, mid-October, I want to say, like, decided, you know what, we're going to do this murder mystery event. And so I all of them that. came together yeah. and did this. It was a really well done event. Huh. Um, and I was kind of skeptical. I was like, this is a newly formed committee. I don't know how they're going to do. And they really just knocked it out of the park. Huh. And everyone who was there was like, wow, you know, this this is actually kind of fun. This is actually really fun. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think there is a need for in-person events, but not at all knocking our virtual events. is like not being entertaining or whatever because they're right. really, really good as well. Can I actually ask how that worked? Like the murder mystery No, I was going to ask yeah. that too. That sounds so, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, so like what I was saying before, right, is like this semester more so than others, we've been like contacting vendors, right? Mm. So like we know like what students would like or like we think we do. Um, but like we think we know what students are like, right? So we had a vendor that we con- that the intern chair, Catherine Webb, contacted. And then they told, I think they sent us costumes um that like we could like send out to students like i think it's like the first 25 students to sign up actually oh, got costumes to so wear cool. to this event <laughs> um and the interns were the people kind of running it so like there's like a script they have to go through too so i think um they had like different sort of like based on the number of people per group so they had everyone split into groups right so based on the number of people a group they had like a different sort of like murder mystery thing and it was based on knives out so oh. it's like kind of this who done it kind of thing yeah. and everyone had a role right um, and there's only like one sort of like murder in each group. Um, and they had to like reveal these clues about themselves and they kind of had like argue their way out of like not being suspicious or whatever. <laughs> so it went re- it, like, it was really good. And the interns did a great job of like running this event. So like one intern, um, per group kind of just like running it too. Um, yeah, it was just awesome. It was really just an awesome event. Yeah, that sounds so interesting. I was seeing like posters for it everywhere. Yeah, I think th- I think we still got a poster up for yeah, it. Actually, I think so. you know, maybe <laughs> we're having another one. Not last time I checked. I don't know. Maybe. So. Interesting. Do you ever have students like come up to you or come up to like anybody on AMP after an event and say like, "Wow, like that was really fun" or like, "I had a really good time." Do you ever see like a direct impact like on students? That's wild. I actually feel like we did. I feel mm-hmm. like we do. Um. You know, I'm trying to think. Because this is bringing me back to pre-Rona times. <laughs> um, but it might have been, like, screen on the green hmm. uh, fall semester. And that's, of course, that's, like, way long ago. But, like, that's, like, the one right. time I can think of, right, um, where we're showing, like, we're showing two very different movies, Detective Pikachu and we're showing Booksmart. I, I was <laughs> like, you know what? We got to show some for everybody out sure, here. Sure. So we're going to do this double feature. Um, and I just remember, like, even people getting popcorn, they are just, like, they were not even just thanking you for the popcorn. They are just, like, Hey, thank you for putting on this event. Like, this is a lot of fun. This is really well done. Thank you so much. Cotton candy machine, not working. It was too humid <laughs> outside. But still, they were like, you know what? Thank you anyways. Thank you so much for putting on this event. Like, I'm having so much fun out here. Um, at the end of the event, of course, like, we say thank you to them. And then as we're sort of, like, walking by, you have some people just saying thank you and stuff. And, you know, sometimes they don't say thank you. And that's okay, too, <laughs> because, like, we're putting these events on for them anyways. Um, and, like, these are events for them, so, like, we don't expect, like, Mm. the thanks or anything it kind of is for them yeah um but it is nice when we get that little thank you from them it it does mean a lot to us i think do you find that like personally fulfilling that you're sort of like connecting with students through these events oh dude 100 percent. like i feel like when i was a chair right i feel like i felt like i'm more so than when as an external director off campus right um (laughs) during virtual events um but as the films chair um last year just like the amount of work that mm-hmm. me and my committee would put into every every event that we did like we really were just going all out with everything we did and seeing like people you know like come out of those events just you know just like happy and smiling and mm-hmm. you know enjoying themselves was really something I mean we the one thing I can remember most is the farewell and the dinner um where we got food from Peter Chang's and we were screening the farewell in chesapeake and it was like a five dollar ticket which five dollars for some chinese food on its own it's a steal it's <laughs> right. just steal some people were literally just showing up for the food and then they were like you know what yeah i'll stay back for the movie 
And they watched the movie, and some people are, like, leaving in, like, tears. Because that movie is deeply moving. And they're like, you know what? Like, I don't know if I would have watched this movie if not for this event. And I'm so glad that I showed up to this event. And, like, things like that. Like, we, like I was running this event with last year's interns. And, like, I could tell, like, how proud they were, too. Like, when they were, like, done with it, they're like, you know, like, wow. Like, we really did that. We put this whole thing together. Um, and, it, yeah, it is a good feeling. It is a really good feeling. That's so cool. So, I mean, so like with the intern program too, like you're not only are you like having that connection with students, but you're also like helping other people to have that connection with students. Yeah. So um, let me just let me backtrack a little bit, just like explain the intern program sure, just a sure. little bit. So it's for freshmen and sophomores and we do this process in like September and, you know, they get on this interns committee and we have a wonderful intern share this year, Catherine, and they just kind of do their own events too. And they sort of, they can do whatever they want. Um, it really is like an experimental time for them to just like figure out, you know, so they can do vendor acts, they can do in-person acts, they can do virtual acts, they can do really whatever they want, but we just want them to feel comfortable with the whole like, um, sort of like event management, event organization, like elements of AMP, um, as well as a sort of like not like leader yeah like leadership development because like they are putting the onus on themselves to create these events and a lot of times the chair would be like you know what like i want you to like brainstorm and put on your own event and the chair will of course like look over it and make sure that it's clean and then they'll go to the exec and the exec will make sure it's clean but it really puts a little bit more responsibility on them and it sort of like allows them to feel like they have you know more uh ownership mm. of their events um and it sort of also, like, guides them into figuring out what committee they'd like to be a part of in AMP. So the fact that we do all sorts of events is really great because then they can be like, you know what, like, I'll show up to this event and volunteer at this event. I'll show up to this event, volunteer at this event. And as they're putting on events, too, they're like, you know what, like, I enjoyed the time that we collaborated with the live committee and we did a com when we found this comedian. Or I enjoyed when we collaborated with the films committee and we were just, you know, just, like, setting up the room and decorating it and all that stuff. So we really try to make this like holistic experience for them to just like do this like deep dive into AMP and see everything that they can see about the organization. So are you doing that this year with Corona and everything? How is that working? Yeah, it's, it's been a little difficult um, doing that. But like I said, the interns share and the interns community is doing pretty well. Um, I think next semester is when we're really going to be doing that um, like more so like different committee immersion. Right now they're just kind of like feeling their way out. They just put a few events on. They're doing LDOC next week, oh. um, which is really exciting. I think they have the event up, um, and we're going to be giving out a little bit of stuff too, um, a little bit of shirts, a little bit maybe, a little clean little Disney shirt with a little Mickey Mouse oh. with a mask on it. Nice. Maybe maybe the Wren buildings on the back of it oh. in a Disney style. Ooh. Maybe it's really clean. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just leaking this information to the presses right now, but um, no, they're like, they're like kind of just figuring their way out right now. And they're also freshmen. So it's like, it's, we don't want to like put too much on them. They're still kind of figuring their way out. Um, we got a, stu a few students who are like not here, a few students in other countries right now that like can't really deal with the time management of it, but they like try to do stuff whenever they can. Um, so of course this semester, not trying to do too much, but next semester is really where they, um, get to collaborate with the other committees and that, that's where the fun begins for them. Got you, got you. And I know you touched on this like a little bit earlier, but next semester is sort of still like navigating COVID, but just with a little more knowledge about how to do that. Like, what do you see AMP doing next semester? What do you see the future of AMP being? Yeah, I'm, I mean, that's a good question. I think this semester for us was, like, I, like you said, it really was us trying to figure out how to get through these COVID times, trying to figure out like what types of events students wanted right now. Cause um, some of the events we did in the past might've not done so well mm. over a virtual format. So we had to figure out exactly what do students want. And I think we got a pretty good like idea. Um, of course, it's not like a perfect idea cause we barely had like a semester, like we had a semester of it. So um, I think next semester I've, I've heard some things about the committee's events and I don't want to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, they're they're really cool events. Don't spoil though. it. I'm not I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna do it for them. But they have some really cool ideas coming up, and like, I think that we've learned what we needed to learn from this semester, and they have too to like have an amazing semester, um, next semester. And I hope that, you know, they can carry this on even when we're in person, completely in person again, um, and sort of like carry on this sort of like 
attentiveness and you know just passion for the events that they're putting on that like we have right now with our exec board i would also ask like where can we find where can students go to find amp events yeah, online yeah, that's Ooh, yes that's a hold on one second let me <laughs> let me, gotta plug this let me pull out all the sure. plugs because some of them got different ads for some sure, like for i sure. feel like it's some some uh some platforms have the tags taken and some don't so let me just make sure i got nice, the right nice. ones and if you want a little freebie of a linkedin connection uh make sure to connect with us on linkedin just search win mary amp and we're there um but on Facebook, you can find us at Alma Mater Productions. On Twitter, you can find us at AMP underscore W-A-M. And on Instagram, you can find us at at AMP underscore W-M. Um, yeah, that's that's where you can find us. And you can find me anywhere, everywhere, on campus, off campus, on Zoom, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on... Is there any other platform I'm forgetting? YouTube on oh on YouTube I guess on TikTok <laughs> just um, it, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> not even telling you where you can find me just, <laughs> just that you can find yeah. me there. you could find me there awesome cool well thank you so much for coming in today thank you guys this was awesome even with quarantine measures in place if you're looking for something to do on campus AMP still has you covered to find out more information and for links to their socials check out AMP's Instagram at at AMPWM that's at A M P W M Thank you to Jehan for joining us today. And if you liked what you heard, remember to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SoundCloud.